What's up guys, this is Demkeys and today I'm going to teach you about random generation and probability based random generation. So real quick, I want to give a small example to explain the difference between the two. Let's say you have an array of game objects and you want to instantiate one of those game objects at a time, but you want to choose which game object to be instantiated at random. In that case, you can use random generation. But let's say you want to give some game objects a higher chance of being instantiated. In that case, you can use probability based random generation. So technically it is still random generation, but you're just giving some game objects a higher chance of being instantiated. So let's begin. We're going to start by adding a sphere to the scene. Click game object, 3D object, sphere. Make three duplicates of this sphere and place them all side by side. Then in the project panel, create a material. So right click, click create, material. The name doesn't matter. Make three duplicates of this material as well and set a different color for each material. In my case, I'm going to do red, blue, green and yellow. Next, assign each of these materials to the spheres in the scene. Next, select all four spheres and add a rigid body 2D component to them. Next, rename each one of these spheres to their respective color. So red, blue, green and yellow. All right, next create an empty game object, call it spawner and add a new script to this game object called spawner script 04. Open this up in Mono Develop. All right, within this script, first we want to create an array of game objects. Type public game object spheres. Then create a new method called spawn objects. Within this method, create an int variable i, and its value is going to be set by random dot range. Random is a class, and range is a method within the random class that takes in either two int parameters or two float parameters and gives you a random value in between those two numbers. So in our case, we're going to pass in two int parameters. And in our case, the values are going to be minimum zero and maximum spheres dot length minus one. All right. So why am I doing spheres dot length minus one? So let's say, for example, uh, we set the size of the spheres array to four. When you count the cells of the array, the count actually starts from zero. It doesn't start from one. So when you're counting it, it's going to go zero, one, two, three. It's not going to be one, two, three, four. That is why I'm setting the maximum value to spheres dot length minus one. All right. Next, we want to instantiate spheres i we want to instantiate it at the position of this game object and with the same rotation as this game object spheres i basically means we are trying to access this cell so whatever this number is we are trying to access that cell of the spheres array now within the update method type if input dot get key down key code dot space then we want to call spawn objects so basically, we want to check if the player has pressed the space key, then we want to call spawn objects. Hit save, go back to Unity, and I want to show you a handy little trick in case you guys don't know. Select the spawner game object and lock the inspector by clicking this lock icon. So now if you select any other game object, you're not going to see any changes in the inspector. And with the spawner locked in the inspector, select these four spheres that we created earlier and drag and drop them into the spheres array. So now this way you don't have to specify the size of the array and manually assign each of the game objects into these fields. It's all done automatically. All right. So now hit play. And now when I press space, you can see these game objects being instantiated randomly. Which game object has to be instantiated is chosen randomly from this array of game objects. All right, now let's try giving some of these game objects a higher chance of being instantiated than other game objects. Go back to the script. And first of all, we're going to create a new class type public class spawn 04. Within this class, we want three fields, public game object spawn object. So this is the object that has to be spawned public int minimum probability range. We want to set a default value of zero and public int maximum probability range. Now go up to where we created the spheres variable. And instead of a game object array, this is now going to be an array of instances of the spawn 04 class. Then in the spawn objects method, we want to create an int variable. And the value of this variable i is going to be a random number between 0 and 100. I'll explain why I have explicitly stated 100 as a maximum value a little later. Then delete this line and we're going to create a for loop. Type for int j 
equals zero, j less than spheres dot length, j plus plus. So basically this for loop is gonna run for the length of the spheres array, which in our case is four. And within each loop, we wanna check if i is greater than or equal to spheres j dot minimum probability range and if i is less than or equal to spheres j dot max probability range if the condition evaluates to true then we want to instantiate spheres j dot spawn object we want to instantiate it at the position of this game object and in the same rotation as this game object and finally just so the for loop doesn't continue executing we call break also above the spawn of four class add a system dot serializable attribute and now hit save and go back to Unity. I'll explain this logic once we have actually tested it out. So go back to Unity. And now when you expand each of the elements of our array, you'll see three fields. Because as I mentioned before, this is an array of the spawn O3 class. All right, so assign each of these game objects, each of the spheres to each of these spawn object fields. And now I want you to set these probability ranges exactly how I'm setting them. Once you understand how this logic works, you can go ahead and change the values to whatever you want. But for now, just follow the values that I'm setting. So for the red object, I want the probability to be zero minimum and maximum five. For blue, I want it to be six minimum and 90 maximum. For green, I want it to be 91 minimum and 95 maximum. And for yellow, I want it to be 96 minimum and 100 maximum. Now let's run the game and see what happens. So now when I hit space, you'll notice a lot of blue game objects are being instantiated. The other colors are being instantiated as well, but blue is being instantiated the most. All right, so now let's take a look at what's happening in our code. So I've already explained the variable. I've already explained what's happening in the update method. In the spawn objects method, we are creating a variable i and its value is gonna be a random number between zero and 100. Now, why did I specify 100 explicitly? The reason is I have not used a number below zero in any of these fields and I have not used a number above 100 in any of these fields. The maximum is 100 and the minimum is zero. There's no specific reason as to why I chose uh, zero as the minimum and 100 as the maximum. It can even be, for example, a negative 100 minimum and positive 100 maximum. But I chose minimum zero and maximum 100 and that is why I set the maximum 100 explicitly. All right, now within our for loop. First of all, the for loop is running for the length of our array, which in our case is four. So the for loop is supposed to execute four times. And within each loop, we want to check if the randomly generated number i is greater than or equal to this element's minimum probability range. And if the randomly generated number is less than or equal to this element's maximum probability range. If this seems really complicated to understand, basically we are just trying to find out if the randomly generated number i is between this value and this value. That's all we are doing. So if this condition evaluates to true, then we want to instantiate this cell's spawn object. And we want to instantiate it at the position of this game object and in the same rotation as this game object. And then finally, just so the for loop doesn't continue executing, we call break. Now, to show you how this is practically working, let's say the value of i is 30. In the first loop, we are gonna check if that number is between zero and five. Clearly it is not. So then in the next loop, we will check if 30 is in between this number and this number, and clearly it is. So then we will instantiate the blue game object. And since we have instantiated the game object, just so that the for loop doesn't continue, we'll call break. So yeah, that's it. All right, I hope this video was helpful. If you wanna check out more videos, head over to my channel and there should be two videos up on the screen right now as well. If you wanna check out my music channel, the link should be up on the screen right now. If you wanna help me out with the donation, my PayPal email address is mentioned up on the screen and in the description down below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave your comments below and I'll see you guys next time.